Hello, this video is part of the Getting Started with SharePoint Framework tutorial series. And in this particular video, we're going to concentrate on how do you set up your Office 365 tenant? Or we actually start from the fact that where do you get yourself a free Office 365 tenant, which you can use for developer usage. This video has been recorded in January 2020, and it's using, well, targeted to use SharePoint Framework 1.10. But to be fair, this particular video, we don't yet use SharePoint Framework. So we're just setting up the scene, setting up a new tenant for you to actually being used for your development purposes. Now, how do we actually get the tenant and how do we start it? Uh, first of all, uh, you can get yourself an official um, uh, and an official E5 developer tenant, which you can use for developer usage by signing in to the Office 365 developer program. And using this program, you get a lot of assets, you get additional guidance, but more importantly, you get a free reunable 90 days Microsoft 365 E5 developer subscription. Now, don't worry about the 90 days either, because as long as you use this tenant for developer usage, it will renew automatically. So basically there are behind of the scenes telemetry, which is analyzing is the tenant actually used for development usage. And if it is, you'll, your tenant will be renewed after the 90 days period or way before actually for the additional of 90 days. And what's really cool about this setup also is that it is actually an E5 tenant. So you get all of the power platform and all of the advanced scenarios as well. So you can actually build sophisticated enterprise solutions using this free tenant uh, for your usage. And again, there is the, the automatic ins uh, inspection uh, that is used for the right purpose, uh, just to make sure that nobody would be using these tenants, obviously, in the official and developer, uh, sorry, official uh, business usage, uh, because that would be a, a false ways of using the tenant. Now, what, you, uh, what happens here is that you basically sign into the program, you let us know what are the things what you're interested on, and then you get your free subscription. You, will, you can actually decide what is the name and the URL of the subscription. We also give you a sample data backs. I will show you what they are in a, in a second. Um, and that's a growing set of additional sample data, which you can actually install uh, to your tenant. So as an example, you can get users, you can get mail and events, which might be useful and definitely useful if you build uh, any Outlook applications, uh, you can actually build example content for or create example or get example content for SharePoint as well and other systems as well. And definitely there's a additional communications, you get emails, monthly emails, and, and you get up, you can easily follow up on what's actually happening in the Microsoft 365 development area. Now, how does this look like in practice? Uh, I've actually signed in using one of our uh, identities here uh, in a different site. So here we go. Uh, I've signed in using my Microsoft 365 developer uh, account uh, and fictional account. And if I go to the developer program and to my dashboard, uh, I can actually see my current setup. So in my case, for this particular account, uh, we have a Microsoft 365 uh, bmp.onmicrosoft.com tenant uh, subscribed. And we haven't installed yet any sample pack so you can actually well actually to be fair we installed the users and mails and then you can actually install also SharePoint sample pack which at the time of recording of this video is in preview and there's a just a small set of site and site collections actually part of this but uh, it will be extended also in the future the whole point of this one is that it makes your development experience as easy as possible and um, it has sample data structures and everything else available now to be fair, just to pinpoint this one as well, whenever we sign up to the program, whenever you have the tenant and you need to actually show cool structures and content, you can always also go to the lookbook.microsoft.com uh, which is a great, great, great asset to get examples, structures, and portals, which can then surface in Microsoft Teams and other structures as well. And this is a extending set of uh, functionalities uh, and templates, which are available for you to install to that tenant. And everything is free. Um, and it's really, really cool that these are actually the same designs which Microsoft used as part of the keynotes in the Ignite 2019. So quite fresh uh, designs and functionalities and new solutions and, and the capabilities will be released here um, as we move along on this journey. So please take advantage on all of these things. Now, let's actually get back on how 
we set up the tenant after you got it. So you need to do a one step uh, as part of that uh, process. So let me actually move back on the other account and I've already signed into my tenant. So in my case, I'm going to use the Microsoft M365 X49367 uh, tenant. And how do we actually get started? So obviously you need to sign in to the tenant and then you need to go to the SharePoint administrative view. So you can get there obviously using the, the admin views. You can go to the Office 365 admin you are uh, use and then select SharePoint from there. Or you can do a quick um, bypass and just do an admin over on the URL and press enter and voila, we're in the SharePoint admin center. And this is basically where we can then see centrally where what site collections we have. We can control the tenant settings or SharePoint, SharePoint online settings and other settings here as well. So in my case, like I said, uh, this is a quite new tenant. So I don't actually have any content here yet. Um, and that's by design. So it's matching what you would be actually experiencing when you're setting up and signing up uh, for the program and getting a new tenant as well. Um, now, the one thing what we need to do is make sure that we go to the settings excuse me, we go to the more features and then uh, in here uh, we see the apps uh, functionality in here. So we need to actually create an app catalog. So by default in these tenants, there is no app catalog, even though app catalog obviously is a critical thing and an important thing for enterprise extensibility. So let's actually create that. So I'm going to click open. And that's going to then open up to the classic, let's say, app catalog creation experience. It's not a super optimal experience uh, currently, uh, but there will be changes on this one uh, in the future. So it might have slightly different perspectives when you're going through this process, depending on how, when you're watching this video. But basic steps are going to be the same anyway. So we're going to use an app, uh, create an app catalog uh, to our SharePoint Online. We're going to create a new app catalog. Let's click OK. And then uh, that's just going to ask what is the URLs and, and the names of the app catalog which we want to use. So typically, personally, I use always apps as sites slash apps as the, as the app catalog URL. So regardless of the tenant which I'm using, I always know where the app catalog is. Some people use app catalog as the URL. It is up to your preference. And what I want to do, how do you want to use this? And then actually, let's let's use the admin account, whatever is your account in your tenant as the administrator for that site collection. And resolving the name, one, two, three, one, two, three, and there we go. Uh, and that's going to be now the administrator of that particular tenant. Again, the account itself and the URL, so obviously dependent on your particular tenant. So the last pointer here is the server resource quota, uh, which for whatever reason is still visible. It has no impact whatsoever in the SharePoint Online currently. So let's put zero, it doesn't really matter what you put there and let's click OK. And that actually starts then the creation uh, of, the, of the app catalog. And we can actually see the progress of that one if we go back on the SharePoint Admin Center, click Admins at, uh, Active Sites. And then when we start refreshing this page, uh, after a while, we can actually see that the creation of the app catalog is in progress. And after a while, it will be then completed. So this might actually take a while because the, the classic app catalog or the app catalog site collection is a classic site collection. So it will take a while to actually get it provisioned. Um, and the while means minutes. Uh, rather than hours. So within minutes, uh, it might be five to 10 minutes even, uh, but it should can be faster than that. So let's actually speed up the video until we can see the app catalog available. And there we go. Now we can actually see the app catalog available. So it's listed as an active site here. It did take like three minutes, uh, three to four minutes in my case. Um, and you can actually go and request the URL before, and you can actually potentially see the site collection there available. And then some background features are still getting activated until it's uh, fully visible in the active science list. So now if we click the, the site slash apps in here, we can actually be, or we will be redirected to the app catalog. And this is the app catalog then for your site, uh, the, the SharePoint online apps and the SharePoint framework solution. So if we go to the left menu, apps for SharePoint, this is where we're gonna then install our solutions and then we'll get them deployed uh, on the tenant level. Now, to get started on the hands-on tutorials and everything else in the uh, in the, the the SharePoint framework tutorials, there's a one more thing which I would recommend everybody to do. Technically, you could use the root site, uh, which is by default created for the tenant, but 
that's not necessarily the optimal thing uh, because it's kind of a special uh, URL. It's not in the slash sites or slash themes like a typical site collections are. This is kind of the, the, the root of your tenant. So it's a slightly different, let's say, URL perspective and you don't want to take your code dependency on only work in the root side and not on the, on the normal site collections. So for that reason, uh, I would actually recommend going to the SharePoint Admin Center or going to the SharePoint uh, uh, experience and then create a new site collection. So let's actually do one. Uh, technically, it doesn't matter are we going to use a team site or a communication site. We definitely prefer modern site collections uh, to be created and, and to be used in SharePoint Online. So uh, I wouldn't actually create a, a classic uh, site collection and let's actually create a team site to get started. So this is a team site, which is group associated team site. Uh, so it has some additional capabilities behind of it. And I'm going to just use group uh, as the, 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 the name on it, uh, which is one of the things what I do at least personally in all of my test environments. So I have a, let's say, standard set of basic site collections and the URL. So I always know that there exist uh, in the tenant. So when I need to do an ad hoc demo, I know that there's the group site collection and there's the comms uh, is one of the other ones which I always use available in the uh, in that particular tenant or my test tenants. Owner, uh, group owner, let's actually do the admin here as well. So uh, it's going to be me as the person who's right now signed in. And the language is going to be English and let's do next. And that's going to actually start the creation of the, of the modern site collection. And with this group associated site collection right now, we're not going to set any additional owners or members and let's actually move there. So we can actually see the site collection available. Clicking that one, we can see a modern SharePoint site collection available with the different functionalities and all of that. And this is going to be then the location where you're going to do testing of your initial web part and additional things which are which will be developing as part of the next steps on the tutorials. One thing maybe to note, uh, definitely based on our documentation as well, whenever we actually use the, the online uh, workspace, uh, you can actually access the online workbench uh, under any single site collection within your tenant. So as long as you go slash uh, layouts and uh, workbench and dot ASPX, uh, that is actually your SharePoint online workbench. And this is one location where you can then uh, basically test your solution. That was just a warning that I don't have any, any local uh, installation running, which is true. But in here, you can actually send test uh, the functionalities. You can test how your web part looks. You can test the configuration. You can then uh, do different kind of uh, settings like a tablet view and, and all of that. So you'll know how the site collection actually or, the, or your web part is behaving in those scenarios. Uh, in this case, I'm just using an out of the box uh, web part, uh, which is the highlighted content web part, but same experience as long as we would have our development, local development and parent running and we're exposing the web part or the solution, uh, we would actually see that available as one of the options in the, in the web part picker. So that makes your life easier because you can then easily debug all of your code uh, against the live site in SharePoint Online, even though you're hosting the development uh, environment or development code within your Visual Studio code. But we'll do that in practice in the following tutorials. And this was more concentrating on how to get started on creating the tenant or where you get the tenant, uh, creating on uh, app catalog, creating the, the setup uh, for the following steps. So let's actually move uh, to the next tutorial and actually install the required settings into your admin box or admin environment, admin computer, so we can actually start creating uh, SharePoint framework solutions. Mm -hmm.